Hello, everyone, and thank you once again for tuning in to the Indiana State Police Roadshow. I am your host, Sergeant John Prine, Public Information Officer for the Indianapolis District. The Roadshow is brought to you each and every week by the Indiana State Police Alliance and Cops for Kids, a subsidiary of the State Police Alliance. For more information about our sponsor, please visit them at www.indianasfinest.com. Once again, just like last week, we're looking good on YouTube today, thanks to the efforts of Mr. Tom Trial. Uh, puts in a lot of effort to this, and and uh, we're real proud to have him on board. And you might be looking across from me and recognize the gentleman sitting directly in front of me because he used to be the host of the show. He's back many years guest, ago. Many years ago, as a guest, a long time public spokesman for the Indiana State Police, recently retired Captain David Burston. Captain, thanks for coming. Thank you. It's good to be here. And I brought somebody that really knows a lot more about the Department of Correction than I do. I brought Margo Oxer with me. Thanks, yes. Captain. Now, now, you mentioned Department of Correction only because you didn't take much time off when you retired. Tell everybody kind of what happened between state police and your new job. Well, everything, including with Ron. No, no, Tell, well, or just yeah. Let's say you retired on a Friday and started on a yeah, Monday. That, How about that, that? that? That's about everything. I did leave on a Friday and and I was unemployed for forty eight hours and uh, I started uh, the new opportunity with the Department of Correction. Uh, very appreciative of Commissioner Rob Carter uh, for having the faith and and inviting me to be part of the team. And I have to tell you, John, I've had a fantastic, <laughs> warm welcome there. Um, the proverbial, too bad Mike Pruitt isn't here. He'll appreciate drinking from the fire hose. Yeah, uh, Just so many things that I, I'm learning in just in, in the first couple of days. And, and that's going to continue on for the next several weeks. Well, I don't think any of us expected you uh, to leave so soon. But when opportunities present themselves, sometimes you have to take faith. But um, but I think they chose the right man for the job for sure. And, and I think that's why the welcome is so big, because they they got have to be honored to have you. Well, it's kind of you to say that. I, I think it's it's fortunate for both sides. I know I have a lot to bring from the side of public information, especially from crisis management. Uh, I'm glad there's You've been... You've done that a time or two. Had a couple of things, and I, I'm grateful that the prison break hasn't occurred yet. <laughs> and uh, it's been a long time since that has happened, yeah. so... You know, there's, there's a lot of great people that work for the Indiana Department of Corrections. I mean, it's a huge operation day to day. Uh, and you brought with you Margo, who's going to kind of be your right hand person uh, helping you through these things. So, Margo, kind of tell people what you do for the Department of Corrections. Um, I'm, am I close enough? <laughs> yeah. Um, basically, what I do is, like you said, be the right hand person for um, Dave and work a lot on social media, do websites, press releases, just kind of all encompassing, work with all of our facility PIOs to get um, the good word out of what the positive things that we're doing within the facilities as well. Right. And, and, you know, that's the thing is it's about promoting the great things because, yes. you know, old times are gone. History is, is history. It's, it's time to kind of revisit this idea of if we incarcerate somebody, uh, regardless of how long, at the end of that incarceration time, you don't just open the door and say you're on your own. It, it's time to, to help these people so that yes. we don't get them back into the system. So that's that's so important for the IDOC. And, and that's exactly what we want to do in the Department of Correction is talk about the positive things, uh, how people are going to be reintegrated into society, that they can make a living wage. And with some opportunities that those skills they are learning, they can make more than a living wage so long as they've given the tools and helped in the direction to not come back. And uh, that's why I, I want to pitch it to Margo to talk about a program that's called The Last Mile. And uh, that's the, the, what happens before somebody is released. Right. Um, so we launched a program called The Last Mile. Um, the initial launch in the pilot was at the Indiana Women's Prison, and now we've expanded to uh, Pendleton Juvenile and Putnamville Correctional Facility and Rockville Correctional Facility. Basically what it is, is it's a program that teaches offenders how to code um, to help them find meaningful employment upon their release. Um, a lot of those kinds of jobs right now are, are really big um, and they, you know, sixty seventy thousand dollars $70,000 a year kind of job. So it's Easily. Really, yeah, so it's really important for them to get those really meaningful jobs um, so they're not doing what they've typically done, which is kind of re-enter and go and work in some minimum wage, really giving them a skill yeah. set that's Gonna and you know, them. you know, it, it seems like it would be next to impossible to get a good job after having a criminal past, mm -hmm. regardless of how much time you know you've got that criminal blip on your record. You come out of of incarceration, uh, having those skills 
is essential to getting a good job because that blip on your record, your your skill and your employability has got to outweigh the risk that they're taking by hiring somebody who who does have a criminal history. Right, um, and we've some of the other skills that we're training within the facilities as well as we've really expanded on our welding um, programs and we're having a lot of success with finding employment for those folks as well. Um, their starting wage for that is really increasing over the years. So we're doing quite a bit to, to really find meaningful employment. You, you look at the skills trades and, and there's not a day that you don't go by or a week and you don't hear a mention of how many unfilled uh, manufacturing positions, skilled trades, uh, be it plumbing, electrical, HVAC. Uh, so anything that could be done to provide some education to, to offenders before they get out just increases their opportunity for success. Now, you may or may not know the answer to this question, but is there somewhere somebody could go? Let's say I'm an, I'm an employer. I own a welding business, mm-hmm. and I, I'm hearing this information for the first time. I'm like, hey, where could I go to find these people? Do I want some trained employees. Is there a place somebody could go to, to hire these folks or find who's available? Yeah, um, we actually have a specific person more more accurately would be a contact that we have. His name's Sherm Johnson. Okay. Um, and... I can shout out his email if you would like uh, me to. Let, let's just direct people to the website. Is there a website they maybe would get a hold of him? Um, probably the Hire the Hoosier Initiative uh, for Reentry would be the Hire best. the Hoosier Initiative for Reentry. Yep. So okay. So that'd be a simple Google search. Yep. Okay. Yeah, great. So great. Hire so, the Hoosier. So again, I mean, I, you said it. There, there's people out there that can't fill these positions. You know what? It might be worth taking a chance on on one of these folks yeah. who have, have gotten the skills. Yeah. It, when somebody has demonstrated that they've worked to improve themselves and not make the same mistakes that they made in the past, everybody deserves a second chance. And the whole idea of uh, Indiana Department of Correction, just listen to the words, Department of Correction, help correct them, uh, give them education, help them to make better choices, give them the tools to succeed. That's the whole goal. Yeah, I had a, a guest on before that was talking about school resource officers, and we were talking about the importance of They have to understand there's consequences for their action, Mm -hmm. but we also have to come in after those consequences and and direct them and mentor them. And that sounds a lot like what you guys are doing is we're not saying, hey, you know, you committed a crime. So here we're going to give you this lavish lifestyle afterwards, after your consequence. It's Mm -hmm. let's coach, let's mentor, let's be a resource for them so that they can do it on their own, but they can be successful. Right. Because over 90 percent of our offenders will get out eventually. And they're going to be your friends, your neighbors, the people that you work yeah. with. So having meaning, you know, having those skill sets and while they're reentering is critical. And great, great. Yeah, point. And, and something to, to really tout upon, and, and Margo knows the figures better than I do, but the recidivism rate in Indiana, I was astounded. Remember, John, I'll ask you, what do you think the recidivism rate is for people that get out of the Department of Correction and come back? You know, in my line of work, it does seem like a lot of the people that I, I deal with on the criminal side uh, have records, and so mm-hmm. I would guess it to be pretty high, probably over fifty percent. So, Margo, educate them. <laughs> it's a thirty-three point seven eight percent in Indiana. Wow, mm-hmm. wow. And in a, in California, which is you know known for being a liberal and thoughtful and forward state, that recidivism rate is well over seventy percent. Yeah, it's up to seventy percent. Wow, wow. So seven out of ten that get out in California come back. Um, here, it's three and a half out of ten. And and I think a lot of credit is to the great people of IDOC who, who aren't willing to just go there for a job. Their goal is to make these people better. Mm-hmm. And, and that that's what you said, correction is the key yeah. word to that. And thank you for that great segue because there are a lot of career opportunities, Department of Correction now. Um, what are some of the positions that are available? Well, we have a lot of correctional officer positions throughout the state of Indiana that we're hiring for. Um, we have correctional counselors, um, so casework and things like that. Uh, there's also some more administrative pieces. We have a business unit, fiscal. Um, I always like to say that IDOC is basically like a city. Every facility is a city. We have maintenance people. We have business units, you, you know, mm-hmm. to keep it all running. So, And these are, are good career jobs with good benefits, retirement packages. That's all there, I'm sure. Right, exactly. So where do people go to find these jobs? They would go to work for Indiana. Dot in.gov and just search corrections. 
Great. Yeah. Great. And there's correction facilities throughout the state, right? So yes. no matter where you live, you're probably within an hour drive of something. Absolutely. Yep. And I'm going to let you correct me on this because I know there's 21, total of 21 yep. facilities. Did I get the number right? Yep, that's correct. All right. <laughs> day two. If yeah. you guys, I know that this show might air uh, in a couple of weeks, but I will tell you that today is day two for Captain Burston's <laughs> new job as the, I guess we never even really told people what you're doing, but yep. he is the yeah. chief Chief Communications, Communications Officer for, for the Department of Corrections. So, and, and it's going to be my job, my honor, my privilege to get out those good stories. Yeah. You know, we can look anywhere, and John, you and I know this from, from our history, that uh, the bad news is going to come up on its own. Uh, the good news happens, too, but sometimes through our own fault, whether it's in law enforcement, Department of Correction, we don't ring the bell loud enough because we feel guilty about saying, hey, look at us, look at what we, di- what we did. Uh, but there's a time and place to show share that information with people because there's a lot of good things that that happen believe it or not in the department of correction uh, and i'm going to help highlight those points in in the days weeks and years to come wow and 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 looking forward to that because one personal thing that i have with the department of corrections is their involvement in indiana special olympics um they have a huge um showing at all of the special olympics events and and that's one thing you don't really publicly hear about but what a great cause a great thing to be involved with and and i can tell you they're very passionate about it and you've done the i saw the picture of the plane pole how when was that done with fedex how long ago was that um we do the plane pole every year so we participate in that every year Uh, we do the polar bear plunge Um, we have some folks that do the law enforcement torch run so we're we're very active within Mm -hmm. the organization yeah so who all has done the polar plunge? I'm curious. I've done it. You have? Really? <laughs> yeah, yes. Did you put a dry suit on or? No. Uh, oh my God. I'm looking forward to, to Dave doing it next year. Yeah. Oh, thanks a lot, John. He could never get me He's to do it. Now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, so committed to be committed. <laughs> so. Well, we have about three minutes left. And, and again, congratulations on your new position. But we also thank want you. to thank you for, for 36 years of incredible service to the Indiana State Police. And, and wow. Uh, as you've told me, it went by in the blink of an eye. So anything you want to say about your career? It uh, it does go by in a blink of an eye. Uh, so many people that I had the opportunity to help, so many people that helped me. It, it's a career. Nobody is successful in any career without having uh, other people to help them and mentor them. Uh, I look back to my first squad sergeants. Uh, I look uh, to the district lieutenants. I think of uh, Sergeant uh, uh, Lieutenant Tim Hardy, a district commander. I think of uh, uh, First Sergeant uh, Bill Bronner, uh, First Sergeant Leon Griffith, uh, uh, both who have passed, uh, very influential in my career. Uh, people that I've worked along the way. The person that, that put me in this position originally, uh, Superintendent Weitzel. Uh, the person that retained me in, in my previous position, uh, Superintendent Superintendent Carter. Um, I can't thank them enough. Uh, it was an excellent career. I would do it all again. Yeah. You know, and and you've guys like you and, and yourself have worked so hard to pave the way for current PIOs like myself. And and I, I cannot even begin to fathom the evolution of PIO that you have seen. I mean, from the, the typewriters and fax machines to email right, to yeah. pagers to cell phones to now, uh, just incredible. And, and uh, you, it's just the tip of the iceberg. I, I don't know where we're going with this, but but wow. Um, I'm well, sure you've mentored many more people than who have mentored you and, uh, and myself being the beneficiary of one of those. And uh, we're incredibly thankful to have you uh, as part part of our, our organization well i was happy to pass the torch uh, i know that you and uh, first sergeant ron galvez recently promoted are going to to carry it forward john you've already done things that have eclipsed what yeah. i did so so keep it up so where can people find you now so let's say the the they're looking for you on twitter on facebook let's let's get get you some followers here well we're, i'm still at d burston okay it's, i've changed on my twitter pro, on at twitter d burston. at d burston i've uh, changed my profile so i dressed more like this <laughs> uh we'll be looking at launching a uh, specific uh, twitter account for my position at doc and i'm going to lean on your help to yeah. publicize that okay yeah we Get will we will you. definitely help out and so. i think that's something you're going to see in the future very shortly is is a more active idoc on on social media platforms because yeah. that's 
it's important to spread those those messages. And Margo, you can tell us where the Facebook is, can't you? I can. Our, our uh, Facebook is just in at Indiana DOC. That's Twitter as well. So, okay. So, and then, yep. at Indiana DOC on Facebook and on Twitter. I want to thank my guest today, uh, Margo. Thanks for coming in and, and retired, recently retired Captain Burston. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, you've been listening to the Indiana State Police Roadshow. Roadshow out.